Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of tech news, gadget views, and answers that you can use. And I bet if you're someone who's been waiting to play Blu-ray movies on your Mac, this is what you've been waiting for. No, not my iPad. The Name Your Own Price Mac Bundle 2.0. All 10 of these apps could be yours if you beat the average price, which at this point is just 8 bucks. Inside, you'll find a fully licensed copy of Disk Tools Pro, Crossover 12, Snaps Pro X, Paperless, the Mac Blu-ray player. I'm not kidding. If you want to watch Blu-ray movies on your Mac, well, first, you're going to need a Blu-ray drive. Second, and yes, by the way, they exist. I've got one installed in my Mac right behind me. It's an external drive back there. It's been there for months. You need this software. Inside, you'll also find a copy of Huda Spot, which is a tool I rely on to find files on my machine. Beats Spotlight any day of the week. Then there's a copy of L Media Player Pro also included in the bundle, which will allow you to more easily download videos from web pages. And to get all 10 of these apps worth $400, you just need to beat the average, which is going up by the minute. So you better get on it now deals.lockernome.com and be sure to spread the word because each person you refer to this deal you can make ten dollars so just to clarify you could potentially get all this stuff without paying anything or even if you do have to pay the current average price it's right around ten dollars which is a bargain dude blu-ray movies on your mac and they said it wasn't possible they did not know the power of the locker gnome the Locker Gnome Daily Report is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces, the powerfully simple way to meet online from anywhere. With GoToMeeting, you can share the same screen, making it easier to be on the same page, all while seeing each other in HD video. Easily launch or join a meeting using your computer, phone, or tablet, even present from your iPad. I used GoToMeeting this morning to meet with a couple of people virtually about our upcoming event, which you're invited to, by the way, Vlogger Fair. That's going to be a real-life event, though. GoToMeeting is used so that we don't have to see each other face-to-face -face and still get things done. You can try GoToMeeting free for 30 days if you'd like. Head over to GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code Perillo. Oh, by the way, that bundle that I was just mentioning a few seconds ago, if you take the top spot, you could win a MacBook Air. The top spot is currently $101, which, if that person gets the MacBook Air, is one hell of a bargain! You might also note that 10% of what you decide to pay for your bundle will be applied to one of these three charities. AMD or NVIDIA. Does it really matter? These two have been leapfrogging each other ever since I can remember. AMD needs NVIDIA as much as NVIDIA needs AMD, because without competition, yikes. Everybody has their preference, and many users really get whatever comes bundled in the computer that they purchased off the shelf. Usually what dictates your affinity for one brand over the other is having a bad experience with a brand that you don't like. I've had generally good experiences with both AMD and NVIDIA products. And as many PC gamers would tell you, it kind of boils down to which games you want to play and what you want to do with a video card. Which side do you currently fall on? The comments are telling. Charles Overholzer chooses NVIDIA because the software allowed him to use a multi-monitor setup with better performance. But if you're a Blender 3D user, you'll also still want to choose NVIDIA. AMD is a bad choice for Linux, but great for Windows 7, says Rafael Sanchez. Again, what do you think? And don't just tell me what you think. Tell me why and how you arrived at your conclusion. The other day, someone posed an interesting question to me. How do I start a social network? Well, it's less about the tool you choose to use and more about the need that exists or possibly doesn't exist. For the most part, people are happy with the options out there. That being said, there's times when you want to have a social network that's built around a very tight-knit community that is addressing the community and their needs in a way that isn't already being addressed. So my number one suggestion, aim big by aiming small. For example, I signed up for Nextdoor a few months ago and have been using it to keep better connected with my neighbors. Go.tagjag.com slash Nextdoor if you want to get your neighborhood signed up, if it isn't already signed up. Because the idea is... We have questions that are really only relevant to the people who live in this area. We don't need to have a huge network to make a big impact. I'll tell you this, unless you're doing something that's incredibly unique, don't expect anybody to adopt your social network. What I'm telling you is the last thing you want to do is start a tech social network because the chances of someone wanting to join, unless you have something else to rally around, are between slim and none. But if that social network tackles a subset of tech, well, there's a possibility you're gonna get a few very active users in it. And just saying that your social network's better than Facebook ain't gonna cut the mustard. My friends over at mobilefun.com sent me this. It's an external battery for the iPhone 5. Complete 
with lightning adapter. Once attached, you can see a battery status indicator through the LEDs below, and you can charge it by way of micro USB. Makes a decent sled, provides some protection, and extra life. And you know when I love using these things most? When I'm traveling, which is about to happen next week when I go down to New Orleans to Keynote PubCon. It's a big online publishers conference that's been going on for a long time. I mean, well, I mean, every year it happens. It hasn't been a constant thing. MobileFun.com also sent me this. It's a car charger with a black lightning cable. My question is, why doesn't Apple make these? Black iPhone, white cable, WTF? Google's next group of gadgets will blow you away, according to Eric Schmidt. Of course, he's said that about every one of Google's products, including Google TV, which I'm still kind of waiting to be blown away by. And I'm not saying that Google makes crappy products. I'm just saying that, come on, it's Eric Schmidt, Google. He, of course he's going to say this. I am looking forward to getting a hold of my Google Glass, if only to do unboxings streamed from Google Glass so you get my perspective instead of the camera's perspective. Google's also published the tech specs on the Explorer Edition, including... A high resolution display being the equivalent of a 25 inch high definition screen from eight feet away. The camera is capable of recording 720p videos and five megapixel still photos. Audio is a bone conduction transducer. That sounds painful. Connectivity is a measly 802.11 B and G. Why no N? But it also supports Bluetooth and has 12 gigs of usable memory synced with Google Cloud Storage, 16 gigs of flash total. The battery says that it lasts one day of typical use. Some features like Hangouts and video recording it notes are more battery intensive. The nicest thing about it, it's compatible with any Bluetooth enabled phone. Microsoft's Xbox team testing smartwatch prototypes with a Surface connector. Is everybody making smartwatches these days? Windows 8 touch devices to drop to $200, says Intel CEO. So would you buy a Windows 8 device if they dropped it to $200? Do you think it would still be worth buying? If you haven't already, would that price get you to adopt Windows 8? Funny or Die's Steve Jobs movie, I, Steve, is now available online. But don't bother to watch it, because I heard it really sucks. And based on some of the reviews I saw for it, I would be better off spending my time doing other things. I did watch the premiere of Defiance on Sci-Fi. It wasn't bad. It's just that I kind of zoned out halfway through. Should I give it another shot? I'm looking for a really good new sci-fi series. And if you haven't already updated the Facebook app for iOS, chat heads are now enabled. And you can... Bounce them around the screen in like some kind of social pong. I'm playing with my dad's head right now. Our question of the day is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. If you want to save money on your next purchase, just email me first, chris at perillo.com, because while they're currently a sponsor, I can send you my latest list of coupons. Rocket Nader asks, how many years does an average person wait to get a new computer? Traditionally, for me, it's been right around the three-year mark, although I've had my Mac Pro since... I unboxed it live and posted that video to this YouTube channel back in 2008. Six years old? It's still running like a champ. Of course, I've also upgraded MacBooks over the years, including my current Retina Display MacBook Pro, which is powering this video recording. People like my dad are still running computers with Windows XP on them. They don't really see a need to upgrade. When people ask when is the right time, I always say, well, if you know you're going to get a system that's twice as fast as the system you have today, you should absolutely upgrade. The one reason you would want to upgrade your current system today is if you're still running on a hard drive. You know, the, the thing in your system that holds all the files inside? I'm just saying that for those who weren't familiar with what a hard drive was. And even if your computer's still running Windows 98, we love you as much as you possibly love us. Thanks again for liking and sharing this video with people that you know so they can join us next time and hopefully have a, a lively conversation around the things that we like talking about in this YouTube channel, which is, well, just about anything that pops into my head. And right now, we'll see you later.